Hi traders, this is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for the 2nd of August. All right, now we've had the FOMC meeting and uh, no surprise, they actually stayed uh, exactly on the path of that, that we uh, expected them to. And the major currency pairs, surprisingly, I, I would have thought, especially with um, Dolly N, I would have thought that would be higher. I expected it to drift down and then bounce, uh, especially after the BOJ a few days ago, you know, being dovish, if anything. Um, the ECB, and they're on hold, I would have expected um, it to drift lower, a little bit lower than what it has at the moment. Okay, so all we've seen is, and if I just uh, take those lines off, okay, we've seen it just trade sideways. I think the market must be sitting um, a little bit square because you can see how the Aussie and Kiwi have just sort of drifted down just through the level, but they haven't really gone anywhere. And that's the same for Euro, although it hasn't gone through any levels. And of course, uh, with the Bank of England today, um, sterling hasn't gone anywhere okay it's just trading sideways in, the, in a sort of 30 or 40 point range dollar cad it is trading sort of sideways with a bit of a downward tone but oil is falling so you'd expect that to um to rally at some stage dolly in it's, it's a bit of a conundrum at the moment i think um well the market's going to be long us dollars and it makes good sense to be it's just whether this cloud holds or not and that's where we sort of come into the next level of um economic data really shapes up the next opportunity and what we're looking for is is in particular us numbers okay the fed have come out they've stayed pat they the market is expecting the fed to raise interest rates in september i think it's 80 percent factored into the market so at the moment we're just in a situation where we're basically on hold and if anything all you're doing is, is just adjusting your trend lines to the most recent moves so aussie and kiwi back to where they are i mean if you've got the same sort of setup as yesterday once again the the main catalyst here and if you're getting a little bit frustrated i understand because there's there hasn't been a really super clear trading opportunity for you know, at least this week the, the currencies are just trading sideways that there's a little bit of a break higher and lower what we're waiting for is definitive direction on the us dollar or definitive direction on these other currencies. Okay, so at the moment, the Kiwi, the Aussie, Euro, and Sterling, we're not getting anything out of those, or even CAD for that matter. So there's no clear direction, so the currencies continue to range trade, and that's a potential strategy you should be thinking of. Now, this is where um, you, you gotta piece all the dots together. Now, if we come over and have a look at the, the major um, economic events for today, right, you're looking at, um, you know, in the Asian session, check out the Aussie trade balance. Now, even Roy's have got this as a, as a really high impacting event. It's not. It would only be a really high impacting event if this uh, expected number um, was super, super huge, like variant. And what I'm talking about is like three or four times difference. Okay, you're looking at imports versus exports. You come into the European session now, we, we do have some Swiss numbers here, right? So manufacturing, retail sales, there's not a huge amount of Swiss numbers that come out. It's very much like the New Zealand economy, very small. Um, have a look at those. It's very rare that they would impact the, uh, the market too much. And then we start to get into the bulk of um, where the key releases are. Now, the Bank of England is the key part. We do have some construction PMI numbers out of the UK first. I don't think they will have much of an impact with the Bank of England uh, a few hours later. Keep an eye on those producer prices out of Europe. They could have an impact um, going into the into the euro, into that Bank of England announcement. Now you've got, um, now let me just come into this uh, Bank of England uh, situation now. What we have is, okay, the rate interest rates are expected to change, right? So if they raise interest rates, don't get all excited about buying sterling. It's already factored into the market. Now what we're looking for is, is the vote count is really important. Okay, if we see more people uh, voting for a hike, okay, even next time, well then that should, um, that, that's a hawkish sentiment from the MPC members. Okay, so that's what you're really looking for. You're looking for a change in the vote count, which is the main thing. Now, if, if the vote count changes, uh, obviously no one's gonna be going to cut, but if they go unchanged and, and it goes from seven to say, that two number goes to like three or four, well, that means they're holding rates and I would expect like a 10 or 15, 20 point move up in sterling on the announcement and then straight, it, it should come straight off. So all the positive sentiment from this expected interest rate hike, you've got to understand is already factored in the market. It's the vote count which gives us the real potential trade here. 
right? So it's a little bit tricky. You got a couple of different variables there. So make sure you're not jumping in straight away. Funded traders, make sure you, you, you wait at least a minute. This is, this is you'll, you'll get better trading opportunities than this. And as we go through the, um, the rest of the day, keep an eye on the um, US factory orders. That's probably a, a decent number to have a look at for the US number following the Bank of England. So if you're in that North American session, make sure you tune in for that. That could give us some US dollar direction if we get some level of variance. Okay, so when you're coming back to looking at sterling, okay, or the Bank of England, we do have levels here, right? We, we have some decent um, uh, top and bottom levels. I mean, support and resistance. Um, it has been trading sideways, so the vote count is very important. Once again, we don't really have super strong US dollar direction at the moment, and that's where you know the trading opportunities are a little bit thinner. It's because of that situation, all right? So if you have a look here at the US dollar, yeah, sure, it's traded through um, resistance here around 94.60, but it hasn't gone on with it. It's just, yeah, it's going up. It's a sort of reassuring vote of confidence that the dollar isn't going down just yet, but no one is willing at this point to take it any higher. So really, all you're doing is adjusting the resistance level. So we're looking for a break above that level, and you know, it's just not really delivering at this stage. And also, on the other side of the spectrum, we've got the offshore dollar one. Now, this is really settled down at the moment, starting to trade sideways, and that sets us up for a potential opportunity, um, well, pretty much either side of the market. I mean, if I just draw with the trend line on the top here, you can see we've got a, a clear resistance level on the top side, if not a, sort of like a triple top, um, and we've got a support level on the downside. So keep an eye on these two levels. These will be very important that the one movements, if Trump or China come out with some comments, quickly look at your dollar one uh, levels. If it's going up or down, that's where the trading opportunity will be. And it will be reflected more so in the Aussie and Kiwi than in any other currency pair. So make sure you know what you're doing there. All right, and that's, uh, that's where we, we come to. I mean, it's, it's one of those ones, it's one of those weeks where there's so much potential, all right, but we're just not getting the overall connection with the actual data and the central bank. So, you know, all, all trading is, it's, you know, it's 10 months of grind for two months of gravy. So just make sure you just relax. We've got good trend lines. We're just looking for that key direction. When that direction comes, it's gonna come across a number of different pairs. Um, now, just, just be aware, Trump administration adds to China trade pressure with higher tariff plan. What he's trying to do is, he's trying to get China to the negotiation table by increasing things, increasing tension and then getting them to speak or getting them to say something. All right, so just be aware, dollar one is in play. We are waiting for China to um, uh, retaliate, which they have vowed to do. Um, dollar holds pad, it's Fed stands pad. Okay, dollar holds gain, sorry. And then don't forget the Bank of England, the main focus today. And um, I was saying here, dollar CAD climbs a seven week high on signs of NAFTA progress. Well, good luck with that, that's just up and down. Trump did originally say it was going to be November, but uh, you know I'm not really trusting what he says. But it's it's just something that I don't think Dollar Cat at this stage is is actually responding to anything to do with NAFTA. It's more around what's going on with oil um, and the domestic economy. So, but it does hang over the hang over Dollar Cat. That's for sure. So um, now let me just come back to those major pairs. So just just focus on your major charts here because. If I just come back up to the ones I've tuned up. Okay, so dollar yen, if anything, now this is obviously one of the key pairs. Now that it's actually sort of calmed down, we do have a, a, a nice resistance line formed on the top side, which gives us a clear target, once again, just above 112. Um, we need some strong US numbers uh, to get that moving again. Um, otherwise, it's just going to grind sideways like we've seen uh, all the other majors doing. Now, also, one other thing, just keep an eye on the uh, yen crosses, they are starting to, um, to to basically reshape. Okay, you've got the Aussie yen, Kiwi yen, Euro yen is actually sort of just tweaking through the, the cloud there as well, and sterling yen. Um, CAD yen is still hanging up in the cloud, and with oil falling, I expect a potential good trade here on CAD yen down through the cloud or down through that support trend line as oil continues to fall. Um, obviously, dollar yen is the one that's gonna be the catalyst for that. So yen crosses starting to form good shape again and coming back into the trading spectrum. So make sure you keep an eye on those yen crosses as well. All right, guys, that's pretty much uh, a bit of a wrap for me. The um, Bank of England is going to be the um, obviously the major focus 
uh, going forward. So make sure you uh, tune into the uh, the release. Don't forget, you know, if you are looking to get heavily involved in this, they are expecting a rate hike. It is the the vote count which will be the deciding factor whether sterling goes up or down or not. All right. Anyway, guys, we'll see you in the trade zone. Have a good trade day. And uh, if you have any questions, by all means, send me an email or we'll just pop a you know, message down through that uh, trade zone. Cheerio.